It's Thursday, the 26th day of April, 2012, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Alex Jones speaks with investigator Jim Mars about the NATO preparations in Chicago. Alex also speaks with deliberate dumbing down of America author Charlotte Iserby with breaking news on education. Plus, Russian troops trained to combat American terrorists and internal emails reveal the Fast and Furious scandal now includes grenades. All that and more coming up. And now from deep behind enemy lines, your host, Alex Jones. First off tonight, what I call the twilight zoning of America, all part of the corporate world government known as Agenda 21. Russian troops, I've seen troops from Israel, England, Germany, Czech Republic, Latin America, you name it, at urban warfare drills trying to take on the American people. It's in my police state films that I've put out in the last 14 years. But I've never confirmed Russian troops in America. Well, it's confirmed now. It's on Chinese TV and press, Russian and U.S. media. Russian troops training to take on the American people. Absolutely incredible headline, Russian troops to target terrorists in America as part of drill. Joint U.S.-Russian anti-terror exercise stokes fears of martial law. And it goes right through the entire report all part of acclimating us to this global government. See, you don't ever want to use troops from your own country or the region you're attacking. Back when the Russians would clamp down on Western Russia, they would bring people in from thousands of miles away in Eastern Russia. Or in Tiananmen Square in 89, they bring people from hundreds of miles away from another ethnic group down to suppress people in Beijing. This is how it's done. Going over some of the article, airborne troops from Russia and the United States would hold joint anti-terror drills in the U.S. state of Colorado between the 24th of May and the 31st, reports the major national Chinese news agency, citing Russian Defense Ministry Colonel. And it just goes on in the official Russian news agency, and then it's in the Business Insider and other reports. They're going to be training there in the real U.S. capital, Colorado, to take on the American people, and it dovetails with NLE-09. Three years ago were troops from 15 foreign nations trained, FEMA admitted, to take on the American people. Why not? Our government's foreign banker run. They're bringing in foreign mercs, like the Brits did at the start of our country back in 1776, bringing in the German Hessians. And here's a flashback. Scouts trained to fight terrorists and more. And the article goes on in the New York Times from back in 09 to say the Boy Scouts are training to take on disgruntled veterans and kill them. That's right, land of the free, home of the brave. Now, moving on to our next big story, we'll be talking to Jim Mars about this, but first, they're banning free speech and gathering at uh, Dealey Plaza in Dallas. That's the main reason he's joining us. Government secretly prepares to evacuate Chicago during NATO summit. We already saw press reports in Chicago where they told people living in buildings and apartments around it, eh, just get out. The government said so, you're going to fall down and hit your head if you don't. Well, now a leaked directive issued by the Red Cross indicates that the federal government has prepared plans to evacuate Chicago during the NATO summit. An email sent to Red Cross volunteers in Milwaukee area notes the NATO summit in May could create unrest or another natural uh, national security incident. A spokesman of the Red Cross told CBS, our direction has come from the city of Chicago and the Secret Service. While the Secret Service has not commented on the news, officials at Chicago's Office of Emergency Management and Communications have denied having anything to do with the directive. Hmm. Continuing to more government uh, liars. The TSA is still groping children in airports. Three years ago when this controversy began, they said, we're not groping children. And then hundreds of videos came out of them taking diapers off, sticking their hands on little girls' pants, men searching girls, women searching men. I mean, craziness. Totally illegal. So they said, we're going to stop it in 2010. Then in 2011, they were going to stop. This year, they, they, they were going to stop. And it's always, we have stopped, or we're not groping, or we're not strip searching old ladies, and oh, I guess we are. We're not robbing your bags. Oh, I guess we are. There's no radiation from the microwave machines. Oh, I guess there is. Lies, lies, lies. 
I mean, demons lie less than these people. I mean, are these people directly out of, like, poltergeist or something? I mean, do they come out of your TV set? I mean, who wants the job grabbing little kids' genitals all day? Couldn't pay me $10 million to do this. Unbelievable. That's an Infowars.com story by Steve Watson. TSA is still groping children in airports. Agents call and refer to kids as suspects, because psychologically that makes them have more fun, and scream at parents who attempt to defuse situations. Children will cry. They go ahead and arrest parents when that happens. It's all part of training everybody to be abject slaves in the land of the cowards, home of the pathetic jellyfish cowards. All right, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, with the teleprompter free news, we have more TSA pedophile news for you. Uh, feds, crooked TSA screeners arrested in drug trafficking scheme. They had their daily 10 pounds of coke they brought through, through the special feds, but uh, they went, and that's marijuana right there in another seizure, but they went through the wrong checkpoint and got busted, but I'm sure they won't get in any trouble. Hell, the federal government's there to ship in narcotics. They'll probably get promoted to the heads of Fast and Furious. And by the way, speaking of Fast and Furious, the Daily Caller reports that we reported months ago, we have a clip of that, Obama administration let grenades, that's granados in Spanish, walk in Fast and Furious documents. Not out of gun shows, but out of military bases and places like that. The email show ATF agents were aware that might lose track of uh, Kingery while they allowed them to transport grenade parts into Mexico. The emails also show ATF agents knew that the grenades could end up exploding and killing innocent people. Well, they blew up Oklahoma City, why not? If they proceeded with the plan, that didn't stop Obama administration's ATF from allowing their grenades to walk so they could blame the Second Amendment. So I'm not poo-pooing the fact the Daily Caller reported on this. It's just we reported on it over a year ago, and I always tell my writers, hey, just because we've already reported on something, reporting on it later with new developments is important to get it out. So this is a lesson to everybody. Now the story is getting attention today. Uh, but here is the CBS News report, October 14th, 2011, last year, grenade walking part of Gunwalker scandal. What a loving, sweet little government that we certainly have. We have a little short clip from last year of CBS News uh, reporting on the grenades that this guy shipped into Mexico so he could blame the Second Amendment. He can't even buy grenades, but whatever he likes to. I, I even blame people for it. They said, grenades, Second Amendment, ban guns, ban, ban. Here it is. Here, here's his little false flag attack. In January 2010, ATF had Kingery under surveillance after he bought about 50 grenade bodies and headed to Mexico. But they say prosecutors wouldn't agree to make a case. Six months later, Kingery allegedly got caught leaving the U.S. for Mexico with 114 disassembled grenades in a tire. One ATF agent told investigators he literally begged prosecutors to keep Kingery in custody this time, but was again ordered to let Kingery go. Well, there you have it. So the exact same story. The point is he was working for the ATF and seven other agencies, FBI, you name it. They ship guns into Mexico, drugs back in. That's in all these federal court cases. That's the rest of the story you're not supposed to know. All right, before I tell you what's coming up next, let me give you the daily quote by Seneca. All cruelty springs from weakness. And that's right, most of the people that are into cruelty and darkness, well, all of them in one way or another, are weak. The strong do not want to abuse the weak. It is only the weak that want to abuse other weak. That is a great truth that I've certainly learned. Now, coming up, Jim Mars on an incredible attack on the First Amendment, and then Charlotte Thompson Iserby. All this and more after this quick break. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. 
You can also call to order 888-253-3139. argument today for attending college is to equip yourself with the skills needed for a lucrative career. However, as college tuition constantly rises, so does the need for student loans. Today, roughly two-thirds of college students graduate with debt. The average amount owed at graduation is approximately $25,000 and payments average around $700 a month. But what happens if someone can't pay off their debt? Currently, one-third of the states in the U.S. allow debtors, those who are in default of a loan, to be arrested and jailed. Recently, Infowars.com has run several stories concerning these loopholes in the laws, allowing creditors to arrest citizens. How does this happen? Unpaid bills are sent to the collection agencies who then file a lawsuit against the debtor. A court summons is then issued, and when the debtor fails to appear, a warrant is issued for their arrest. With the growing number of students attending college and the national debt, these loopholes should be a primary concern to anyone who has ever held a student loan or any loan. Most of the students I approached did not want to appear on camera. However, many of them were unaware that defaulting on their loans could result in an arrest. Melissa Letourneau reporting for Infowars.com. Topics we're going to be talking about tonight. 19 things the mainstream media has been strangely quiet about. It's an article from PrisonPlanet.com. We're going to take a look at that tonight, as well as the Fukushima issue, which is one of the 19 things the media has been strangely quiet about. Other topics for tonight, we're going to take a look at Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department partners with Alert ID. What does that mean? How do you feel about having a neighborhood watch on your smartphone? As well as the main story, unfortunately, Las Vegans are sadly unaware of what the installation of the recent smart meters means for them in the long run. They're unfamiliar with the globalist agenda behind it, which is Agenda 21. Let's break that down here in just a moment. First story tonight, 19 things the mainstream media is being strangely quiet about. Number two on this list of 19 is Fukushima. Now, Fukushima was covered largely when it happened, but it's really drifted out of the mainstream media since. The bigger problem at Fukushima is not the cores, but rather the spent nuclear fuel that sits on site. Tons of it, tons of it, literally, thousands of tons of spent nuclear fuel on site in above ground storage containers predominantly. Storage pools completely exposed without any core shielding them from the public. Now, with another really terrible earthquake, it's hard to say what would even happen. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight we have breaking information on the death of the Long Gun Registry. We'll be following the trail of debris from the Fukushima disaster to British Columbia. And we will check on radiation levels.
And we'll be talking to Canadians about smart meters. This is one of the evil smart meters. Canadian gun owners got a long-awaited surprise Thursday afternoon. Let's talk to a local gun shop owner. Here's Carl Granlund of Granlund Firearms. Well, Lori, uh, the G Canadian gun registry really is gone. On Thursday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, we sold a, f a gun to a fellow and uh, we had to register it. And uh, while I was mounting the scope, uh, he decided he was going to trade in another gun. And when he went to phone the call center and register that one into our inventory, we found out that uh, registration was no longer required. So, Carl, what does this mean for Canadian gun owners? This is a huge victory for Canadian gun owners. The government has wasted billions of dollars over the last 14 years, and we're just so relieved to see it gone. It'll make our life a lot easier, and it'll make it a lot easier for Canadian gun owners to uh, purchase a firearm so they can go hunting. Do you think the death of the Canadian Long Gun Registry will affect Canadian safety? I think that the safety of the public will actually be improved by the death of the registry. The RCMP will now have time to work on real crimes instead of wasting literally millions of hours uh, chasing paperwork. So Carl, do you think gun sales will go up? They already have. We're starting to see the guns come out of the closet now, uh, now that there's no danger of going to jail for having an unregistered gun. And people have to realize this is such a, a great thing for young kids that are trying to get into the market. Their dad can buy them a used gun now at a reasonable price and get them started. And it's also a good thing for widows who are trying to dispose of an estate. They uh, can sell the guns readily now without having to worry about running afoul of uh, constantly changing rules uh, and paperwork that often result in a catch-22 situation. Well, there you have it, folks. You heard it here first on InfoWars Nightly News. The Canadian Long Gun Registry is dead. This is Monday, April 23rd, 2012. And I am your host, Charles Lester, broadcasting from the battlefield in the war for your mind. Welcome to the InfoWar. Without doubt in America, there is an awakening happening. And because of this awakening, the predictable, the population is beginning to question the official narratives. And thus, for the first time in modern history, there is an actual resistance forming to the ever-increasing instances of our government's power grabs. How does this government respond? My position is, is that it responds by the age-old ploy to divide after distraction and ultimately to conquer the populations of the world. Leading off, we have a video clip that was first aired back in March on Channel 13, the local CBS affiliate in Baltimore. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. 
Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important, but we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. We are back on this Thursday, the 26th of April, 2012 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up after we talk to Jim Mars, Charlotte Iserby, the former head of policy at the Department of Education, who blew the whistle on the plan to dumb down the American people. She's going to expose the latest developments in Agenda 21 and how it ties into the move to ban children from doing farm chores by the Obama administration. That's coming up. But first... Just when you think you've heard it all concerning the assassination of JFK, next year is the big 5-0 anniversary. And the school book building that's turned into a propaganda center uh, to brainwash and push the official lie that less than 10% of the American people believe in major polls, it has done something unprecedented. And the Dallas Observer and others are reporting on it. For a hundred and something dollars, they've leased it for five days, and they're saying they're not going to let the alternative media and people in there who've been at every event in the last few decades. We're talking about authors like Jim Mars, who wrote the book that was used in the film JFK, and Mr. Groden, who also worked on that, and so many others. They're being told, we're not having a circus. So it's a non-speech zone where they can have the international media for this huge spectacle, kind of like 9-11 now. They push you back miles from the crater and only the official propaganda. Years ago, we could go and expose the inside job from outside the crater and inside they'd have a media spectacle. But because they couldn't fully black out the truth, they backed it up several miles now, an entire area of lower Manhattan. Well, now it's the same thing for the 50th. We'll have to wait another 50 for them, I guess, to release all those documents. They were supposed to release them a few years ago, but they said maybe it's best we don't. Now, the first man to ever teach a college class on the JFK killing and the truth of what happened is Jim Mars, best-selling author, crime reporter, Fort Worth Star-Telegram is how he got started. He's been on this since day one. He knew Jack Ruby. I mean, just an amazing individual. Jim Mars doesn't need an introduction here, but this is a big deal because uh, they're going to let this, this propaganda organization take it over and manage it like this was uh, Russia or something. 
Uh, amazing. So I will be there, even though it's over a year from now. I will be there, and I'm calling on tens of thousands to come. So there's such a spectacle that they cannot shut down free speech. Because even if you believe in the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and that a lone gunman killed JFK, even if you believe in the Keebler elves, even if you believe in unicorns and pixies and elves and, 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 and Marvin the Martian, and you believe that's all real, and, and, and you believe the official story of JFK, that's your business. Don't you, though... Believe in the First Amendment. Joining us from outside DFW is Jim Mars. Jim, this is unprecedented. Uh, break it down for us. And the fact that there is somewhat of a furor there in Dallas over this. Well, unprecedented is absolutely correct because I know for a fact that uh, several organizations, several times, people have gone to the city of Dallas to see if they couldn't, uh, you know, lease or rent for the day or something, Dealey Plaza, and they're told, no, you can't do that. Uh, it's a public park, you know, supported by public tax money. Uh, and yet the Sixth Floor Museum, which is a creature of the Dallas Historical Society, which is made up of the, um, largely of the wives, sweethearts, daughters uh, of the uh, ruling class in Dallas, uh, have designated that uh, it's going to be their public park uh, for about a week before and after the so the dilettantes the dilettantes are yeah. saying your public park can go to hell this is soviet russia get used to it <laughs> well essentially that's about it uh they have uh, leased the whole thing and for the day for 110 dollars uh okay plus uh, apparently they put up a 200 dollar damage deposit which i assume they'll get back so i guess it comes to 310 dollars but they get two hundred dollars of that back. Uh, what's interesting is, is in the past, uh, people have come there every November the twenty-second, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's always and the few, several times I've been there, uh, it's been very uh, uh, somber, uh, very considerate, and people pick up their own trash, and the the place isn't littered at all. It, it's the way things should be in a public place. Uh, but this time, uh, they realize that the entire focus of the world media will be on Dallas on the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. And apparently they are taking these moves to try to restrict and suppress anything other than the official uh, lone assassin theory. Uh, and by and the way, you, that's going to backfire. I mean, I, I've looked at hundreds of scientific polls as you have. It's most yeah. of them are above 90 percent, sometimes 85, 87. It's well right. over 90 percent. They've already lost uh, the, the 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 prostitute media. The New World Order is going right. to, you know, not talk to you anyways. I think this is going to backfire on them. Yeah. I think this uh, this is going to be. And by the way, what about this? Jim? I want you to comment on the backfire. But before I forget, what about the fact now that they are showing us this form? They're going to have discrimination lawsuits on them now if they don't lease it out to other people in the future. Exactly. Exactly. I, that, this is the biggest, stupidest thing Dallas has ever done. By the way, Alex, you've been to Dallas many times, and you see signs to the, to the zoo, to the aquarium, you know, this way to Stimmons Freeway. Uh, have you ever seen a sign that says, this way to Dini Plaza? They, they will not even put up signs showing people. How, there's a lot of people come from all over the world, and they don't even know how to get to Dealey Plaza, although it's just, you know, the, the, the west end of the downtown section. But they don't really know, and there's no signs. And this goes back years ago, back into the 70s, when the big uh, worldwide uh, sensation was the TV show Dallas. And the Dallas uh, authorities uh, kept saying that it was the biggest uh, tourist attraction in Dallas was South Fork the ranch where they filmed the Dallas. But I'm here to tell you, that's not true. The biggest attraction has always been and still is Dealey Plaza. But they try to act like it's just not happening. And then they wonder why Dallas has this bad image all around the world. Think about it. Uh, you know, there was an assassination attempt on Roosevelt uh, in Florida. Uh, the Robert Kennedy got killed in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, but nobody holds those cities accountable. But Dallas still has this lingering stench of uh, conspiracy, shall we say. And they're promoting it themselves by actions such as this. But it shows the pig-headed, hubris-filled ignorance. Uh, now, now, the Dallas yeah. Observer, the, 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 uh, I want you to contrast this. The Dallas Observer has actually been doing some really good reports on how this violates the First Amendment. Uh, is right. Kafka-esque in 1984. To contrast that, 
the Dallas Morning News right next door to Dealey Plaza, they're like, it'll be swimming with cameras, uh, they say in the first li line. They, yeah. We need to block the riffraff out, you know, the 90 plus percent that knows the government <laughs> blew his head <laughs> off. You know, we need, to, we need to block the American scum out of here while we have the TV cameras there and shovel some more propaganda down people's throats. You know, we'll have our dilettante old beauty queens out there walking around with their mint juleps spritter spratting to the media. I got news for them. We're going to be down there with bullhorns. There's going to be thousands of us now, and I hope they enjoy us shoving the First Amendment down their stinking throats. Well, I'll tell you something. There's a writer for the Dallas Observer named uh, Jim Schultz, uh, and he had been trying to get hold of Frank Librio, I suppose, L-I-B-R-I-O. Frank Librio is the city official who's kind of in charge of this thing, and he will not even talk to the Dallas Observer. How's that for freedom of speech and, and free access and a free and, and objective media? I think everybody ought to contact Frank Librio of uh, the city of Dallas and ask him, you know, why he won't talk to the media about these uh, suppression plans for D.B. Plaza. I got an even better year. idea. All the groups, because I know the different JFK investigation groups, Grodin and others have been arrested countless times. The courts have ruled. <laughs> Uh, uh, he can be out there with his, you know, uh, information, talking to people like anybody else can. How about everybody who's been discriminated against and won't be issued a, a, a official permit to have an event there, not just take it over for five days? How about they sue the city preemptively for total <laughs> discrimination? Because if they can get away with this, they can get away with anything. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll lease, uh, you know, Texas Stadium for five dollars to their cousin next. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it, this is this is not even about the Kennedy assassination. This is about basic freedoms. And Alex, you of all people know exactly what I'm saying here because this is what it's all coming down to. This is what Infowars is all about. It's about the battle for your mind. You know, are we a free people or not? Uh, you know, uh, being free in my mind is like being pregnant. Uh, you can't be just a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You're either free or you're not. And if the city can issue a permit to keep people out of a public park supported by public tax money, uh, you know, for one group, but then not give it to anybody else, uh, that's not freedom. Well, it's truly disgusting that they will not issue um, the people that know the truth about the murder a speaking permit in all these years, a permit on a right for, this, for the Memorial Day ceremonies. And now they'll just say, hey, dilettantes, come in five days, $110, with an additional 200 that's refunded. So for $300, you get to take over. And they admit, because we want to block out all the riffraff, which is 90-plus percent of the American people. I mean, it just shows how disconnected these people are. They really are disconnected, and as far as I'm concerned, I think we all ought to go to Dealey Plaza on November the 22nd, 2013. It's a public park. Let's just all go there. Don't be rowdy. Don't be bad. Don't be nasty. Just, you know, go to the park. And it's everybody should place. take, everybody should take uh, one JFK book or some flyers <laughs> or a film and give it to somebody. Yeah. And, and just have go. that place knee deep in documentation. That's right. No, I think I think the Dallas authorities have really tripped themselves up this time. And, and you know what? I, I, I wouldn't even blame the city. Uh, the city answers to these dilettantes, as you say, and these people uh, are just totally disconnected. And that's what makes this thing actually so ludicrous because they're trying to stifle any kind of dis dissent from the idea that it was just a lone nut that killed the president. And yet, as you so well pointed out, national polls show that uh, the vast majority, I'm talking 80, 90 percent of people, no longer believe that anyway. Okay? So, you know, what's the problem? Let's just have freedom and let's have everybody present their side and the, the side with the best case will eventually win out because truth will out. Well, uh, Jim, well said. Other facets to this, because we're talking more than a year out, it, it, it just shows how on every front, the TSA now on the streets in Dallas and Houston groping people, yeah. searching bags illegally. Lawyers have come out and said, this is illegal. And they've literally in Houston basically said, go smoke a pipe, go jump in the lake. I mean, they just don't care. Uh, the IRS is saying they're going to revoke passports. Uh, just hey, this is, a no this judge is jury. I mean, this, this is right out of Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. And it's on every front, government has gone crazy. 
this is a police state. This is a police state. And uh, I don't think that's what anybody wants. I don't care what your views are. It is a police state. Right before we went on air tonight, you were saying, Alex, what about this news? They're just pulling out all the stops. And I said, hold on, save it for the air. What were you <laughs> going to say then? Well, it's everything you just went by. I mean, you start with the Patriot Act, and then you come up to the Military Commission Act, and then you come to the NDAA, and then you get to the uh, uh, Presidential Executive Orders where the Secretary of Defense is going to be in charge of all the water resources. That means your rain barrel. That means your the pond behind your house. Uh, and I suppose that even means the well. If you yourself paid for it and had a well dug, uh, they're going to be charged with water supply. They're taking charge of everything. And the, and the only problem is, uh, Alex, is that they haven't actually banging on your door yet. Okay? But it's, they're putting it all in place. They're putting it all in place, and at some point, a soldier will come around and say, according to the uh, executive order under natural resources, uh, you know, signed by the president, uh, you know, we're, we're taking your rain barrels, and uh, we're going to put a smart meter to measure every uh, drop of water that well, goes wait, through wait, your wait, house. Wait, 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 That's already beginning under this Rural Affairs Council, and all over the country, federal grants have police knocking on doors between midnight and 4 a.m., if they don't think your house is properly secure and making you get up. So they want to acclimate us to have contact with the police. They want that 95% that's law-abiding and criminology to get used to the fact that spread them, get ready, because, you know, we're going to frisk you. You're a criminal. This is martial law creeping in. What do you make of the Labor Department rule that no more family farms, your kids can be, cannot be involved in any chores, period? Well, that takes care of the FFA and 4-H, doesn't it? And I, and I got to tell you, even though basically I'm a city boy, but I live in the country now, and I tell you what, some of our finest citizens uh, were turned into good, productive citizens because of their experiences with FFA and the 4-H. And, the and to do away with that, to do away with the Boy Scouts, I mean, they are destroying this country. And nobody seems to know or care because all they do is watch TV and they watch, you know, American Idol and they totally distracted. They're drinking the fluoride. Well, look, They're being sprayed by the chemtrails and they don't have a clue as to what's about to come down on them. Well, yeah, that's a violation of the 10th Amendment, states' rights. Ninth Amendment, what are the feds doing out of the jurisdiction? It's a violation of basic human rights. It's a violation of parental rights. All over the country, they're giving kids shots now without parental consent. Totally exactly. illegal. And they're taking their DNA. When they take the seven-year-old's DNA, they, the cops say, they gave me consent. Well, a pervert can't have <laughs> sex with a seven-year-old because they gave consent. They're not of the age of consent. You give a 16-year-old some liquor and they're not your child, you can go to jail because they can't give consent. It's called contributing to the delinquency of minors. I mean, it's amazing. Just look, it happens every other country. We've got a case of tyranny, brother. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's absolutely true. And the thing is, what I'm, my point being is that they're now codifying it and making it all legal. You know, so when the cops bang on your door at four in the morning, and here's the thing, I ran with cops for years. They, they, and I, they, I love them. They, they are a vital necessity to a civilized society. And most of them are good folks, but they just do not realize uh, how they're being taken over and misused by, well, for want of a better term, the new world order. Well, yeah, let's so be well clear. Heard. I mean, you know, as a crime reporter for decades at the Fort Worth Star Telegram, the crime reporter, obviously, you know, police. That was the old breed, and there's still a lot of good ones today. But, yeah. the, but the directives are corrupt. But I, I will tell you, in these articles about the knock and talk, the police are the ones complaining, saying, we think this is dangerous. People are getting mad. We don't like this. They're the ones that actually <laughs> complain. That's how we know about it. Is they're well, complaining everywhere. I mean, who wants well, to go bang on random people's doors at 3 a.m.? Well, I live in a rural county. I guarantee you, you come bang on somebody's door around here at 4 a.m., you'll probably get a case of buck shot. <laughs> you just don't do that. All right, this is ridiculous. And as you said, I think this is just a conditioning program to get people conditioned to the cops are going to tell you where to go, where to stop, where to lay down, where to put your hands, what to eat. You know, it's this is not right, and this is not what this country is supposed to be about. And uh, we have a very narrow, uh, uh, increasingly narrow window of opportunity to, to vote some people in with some sense, to stand up and say no, to tell our local officials, just tell them the feds to take a hike. There was a, uh, I'll tell you, a good example 
was the sheriff up in one of the uh, northern western, I think it was in Wyoming, maybe Montana, and he publicly said that if federal agents come in his county and do anything that violates the Constitution of the United States or the Constitution of that state, that his deputies would escort them to the to the border and kick them out. Yeah, there's and been a need, bunch of those. There's been a bunch well, of those, and Sheriff well, Mack well, is, yeah. is having meetings with hundreds of them. Go ahead. Yeah, well, this is exactly what we need to do to take this country back. We can't look to Washington. That's the problem. We need to start locally and just tell the people in Washington, to, hey, go get a real job. Well, that's the answer is when some fed shows up in this rural council to tell you your kid can't be, you know, getting the eggs in the morning. It's time for everybody to get together and tell them, get the hell out of our county. Yeah. I mean, it's real simple. You, I mean, you degenerate, shameful, communist scum. But of course, I say communists, it's Big Agra who openly wants to shut down what's left of the family farm. They've got all these regulations written that they're all exempt from to openly <laughs> shut down the family farm. I mean, these people are, are just absolute trash. And they, these are laws that are being uh, passed by Congress who exempts themselves from Obamacare and from the national, from Medicare and from, uh, you know, Social Security and have, have placed themselves on the uh, federal employees' retirement fund, which is their own little private golden parachute. I, I'm telling you, we really do need one more amendment to the Constitution, and that is any law passed by Congress applies equally to Congress. <laughs> I agree. JimMars.com in the four or five minutes we've got left. I always love to throw a curveball or wild card at people. In the last five minutes, I have no idea what you're about to say. What is front and center on your radar screen? What is most interesting to you right now? Uh, <laughs> what's most interesting to me right now is the fact that the, there is abundance of evidence, uh, including the FEMA camps, a lot of things you talk about, the seed vault in Spitsburg in Norway, uh, the underground dumb shelters, deep underground uh, military bunkers, uh, you know, the, and plus this crackdown on trying to get a chokehold on every individual in this country and apparently in the civilized countries of the world, uh, uh, apparently there is something coming up of a geophysical nature. Uh, I think uh, I have no idea exactly what it is other than the ring of fire in the Pacific is just a lot ablaze with earthquakes and armies. The major earthquakes that have been happening, unprecedented in recent history. I think we're getting ready to see some real uh, traumatic changes take place in the ge uh, geography of the planet. And I think at some high celestial place, they're well aware of this and they're keeping us in the dark. But when it happens, they want to be able to maintain and grab total control. And this is, I think, the, the uh, ongoing impetus for this push towards totalitarianism. Uh, and they may be able to rationalize it away, but it's not going to wash with me. I think people ought to be free, and I think people that includes the freedom of having the, the knowledge of what uh, to prepare for. Well, Jim, I agree with you, and government is digging in against the people. The ring of fire is heating up. Just take Fukushima, where Reactor 4 is still melting down, and if it totally melts yeah. down, top scientists say it'll be the equivalent, bare minimum, of 85 Chernobyls. Yeah. And it's not even a news item. No, you don't hear that anymore. Neither do you hear about the ongoing crisis in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf is practically dead. They're getting shrimp with no eyes. They're getting shrimp and other uh, sea creatures with uh, tumors. Uh, the oil's still there. They're still spraying Corexit, a dangerous chemical. Much worse than the oil, yeah. Much worse than the oil. All it does is push the oil to the bottom of the sea, and it'll eventually work its way up. Uh, these are environmental absolute disasters, and they're not even on the news anymore. That gives uh, new meaning to sweeping it under the rug, all that <laughs> oil. Really, really, absolutely. It just push you to the bottom of the ocean and tell everybody it's okay. Uh, people are dying down there. There's been more than a 1,000 uh, first responders to 9-11 to, uh, on Manhattan there that are already dead and many more of them get, get heading that way. And, and yet this comes from uh, the same Environmental Protection Agency that told everybody, oh, the air's fine in Manhattan. Just go hey, back Hey, let me throw business. this at you. What do you think about Mitt Romney versus uh, 
Obama, both paid for by the same banks, both support carbon taxes, open borders, gun control, uh, the left. Endless, but, but, uh, endless, endless war. There, hey, there's no difference. There's the left and right hand of the same entity. Well, so then what do you make of Obama publicly saying, I can't wait to get reelected to use dictatorial power and executive orders to ignore Congress? I've never heard talk like that in all his executive orders. It looks like they're really trying to get people ready uh, for the big deal. I mean, they're, they're, they're now. Oh, yeah. 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 What's your take on that? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, that's it. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're pulling the gloves off. There's, there's no longer any sneak and hide around and try to act like it's all about something else. This is about naked grab for power, okay? And I tell you that what it really gets me is uh, when Obama comes out and announces he's forming uh, black America, African Americans for Obama. Oh, wait a minute, isn't that racism? I mean, I thought that's why we kind of went along and elected a black person so that we wouldn't have racism. What, what, what if you, what if Alex Jones got up and said, I want to form white Americans for me for president? It, wouldn't you be raped over the coals by the media? I mean, this is the hypocrisy of what's going on now and the insanity is just beyond belief. You're absolutely right. Tell us about your last book and the new book that's going to be coming out. Well, the last book is The Trillion Dollar Conspiracy. And I, it's still valid. It, it lists just about everything we've been talking about, plus much, much more, uh, fully documented, fully footnoted. Uh, plus, there's a, a section at the end that actually uh, offers some ideas on what can be done about all this, okay? Now, the new book coming out that I've just turned in, it won't be out probably until maybe even the first of next year. Uh, we'll talk about that later. It's going to be a real eyebrow raiser because... Uh, it's focusing in on uh, these people who are trying to run the world, these people who are behind the New World Order. Who are they? What do they really want, and where did they come from? And you might be surprised at the answers. I can't wait to read that and have you on the show and carry it in the InfoWars.com shopping cart. Uh, Jim Mars, thank you so much for the time tonight. Thank you, Alex. Amazing information. All right, that's Jim Mars. We're going to go to break and come back with Charlotte Israby to understand what Agenda 21 will do through education, the end of parental rights, forced inoculations, forced abortions, doing whatever they want to your children, not letting you have them do chores. The state is mommy, the state is daddy, and the state wants to make sure they're brain damaged, addled servants of the new world order. We'll be right back. Don't forget you can subscribe 15 cents a day at prisonplanet.tv or get a 15-day free trial to see this when it first airs, 7 o'clock, all the films, archives, and more, prisonplanet.tv. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. And we are back. Thank you for joining us. And now we're going to have our second interview of the evening here at InfoWars Nightly News with Charlotte Iserby. 
Charlotte Thompson Iserby, who of course uh, wrote the first phone book size uh, book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. She's now released, that's out of print, a uh, revised and updated edition that I should add is still very lengthy, but uh, absolutely essential for any educator or parent to understand what's really happening from the inside. She, of course, was number two at the Department of Education, the head of policy, and her father and grandfather were also members of Skull and Bones, and her original uh, information that was linked to Anthony Sutton is what blew that order wide open. And uh, we, of course, have premiered those in-depth interviews here for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. But tonight, she's got new breaking news and analysis on education or the brainwashing uh, in fact, later we should cue up the attorney general saying he met with the media to 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 brainwash the public against guns. There, there's video of this. This is their whole worldview. This is a process of brainwashing. If the public seems totally dumbed down, many of them, it's a process. It's also not just educational. It's chemical to the fluoride, all of it. And now those documents have been released. So just amazing information beginning to unfold. But first, because her book gets into this, she talked about this in the 80s, and Ronald Reagan basically showed her the door, that there was a plan to basically end the family as we know it. She's got the quotes where they call it a disease inside government, and to slowly get it to where the parents just have the children, and they're taken like eggs from a hen by the state. Communists tried this, Hitler tried this. This is the real authoritarian model. Now, they're targeting the farms under Agenda 21. Big Pharma and Big Agra write the laws that they're exempt from to try to shut down the family farms. Now, Obama has come out and said a rule, not a law, but a rule. He's going to ban anybody under 18 on their parents' farm. It's going to kill the family farm. It's going to kill that tradition. It, I mean, it literally breaks its back. He's saying, as we covered last night, and we've shown you these articles, he is openly saying a rule, dictatorially, that you will not be allowed to do chores, any of it, getting eggs, dealing with any raw materials, uh, dealing with anything, it's over. This is the incredible takeover of our society. So I wanted to bring that up and get Charlotte's take on it. We're about to go to her. And also, California passes a law. They can pass laws, they can kill you for no reason, doesn't make it constitutional, that they can get consent from you know, 10, 11 year olds to get Gardasil vaccines or abortions without parents. Well, can a pedophile get consent from a 10 year old girl to have sex with them? No, even if he tricks them to say yes, they're not of the age of consent. Well, now the state's saying, we're taking kids DNA nationwide, coming in, going, give us your DNA. And if the five year old gives consent, the police are saying it's okay, because parents don't count. This is incredible. This is the state destroying parenthood in front of our eyes. So talk about vindicated. Charlotte Iserby has been vindicated from her stand in the 80s and her tireless fight in the last 30 years. And she joins us as an internal whistleblower uh, who has really slowed down their agenda. But now they just don't care if it's out in the open. They're rampaging forward. Charlotte, there's my opening analysis. I want your take on this attack on parenthood, the farms, all of it. I know I've talked about it, but I want you to go over it and then tie it into the overall Pavlovian dog training uh, and uh, break it down for us, uh, the, the, the new information. Uh, Alex, uh, what we're looking at now, it's, it's sad. We're, we seem to be, to have arrived at that 50 year period, certainly it's more like 100, but major change agents say it takes 50 years from the beginning of change, you know, the agenda, setting of an agenda and implementation. And uh, what we're really, really looking at is uh, going back to uh, 1965, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Uh, and the purpose of that act, in a few words, was to change education from, accurate, uh, from academics, uh, where children have upward mobility, they study the arts and the sciences and music, et cetera, to performance-based which is what's going in right now all over the country. And it's been called different names through the years. Started out being called mastery learning. They experimented in all the inner city schools with the Skinner method. And that's why the, the deplorable test scores for the inner city schools. They started that in 1968. And people just never seem to figure it out that they weren't looking for academic results. They didn't care about the inner city kids going down the tubes. They were changing the system. 
They were changing it to a system which is going to be implemented right now through school choice, charter schools, and it's been set up ever since Carnegie Corporation in 1934 called for it in its uh, conclusions and recommendations for the social studies. Carnegie in 1934 called for this system. You do away with grades, A, B, C, D, E, F. You do away with kindergarten through 12th grade. It's continuous progress. There's no competition. And a child can graduate at uh, age uh, 12 or 21. This is a new system. This is, all right, I think your audience can probably fill in the blank there. This is the Soviet education system. If you compare their system to what we're putting in now, no competition, right? The Soviets don't like, companies don't like competition. This is the school to work agenda where they identify the children at an early age, what they're going to be doing for the rest of their life, womb through tomb. Now, everything that goes on in our lives is going to be the Chinese system modeled on the Russian under the umbrella of the unelected school district. All these documents are in my book. Now, unfortunately, what we have happening here is the neoconservative movement, which has its roots in Trotskyism, is supporting this. They're supporting school choice. They're supporting charter schools. And it's understandable that people would go along with it because the schools were deliberately dumbed down to such an extent that people will accept any solution, even the loss of representative government which is unelected boards to run the charter schools. All right, let me stop you for a moment. And I, and I should also add that you still agree to this interview because you care about this so much. And there's been some new development with this charter schools. That's the breaking news. And you also are sick and under the weather, but you're still doing it because of that. And we appreciate you. And by the way, you're doing a great job. But I want to just back up what you're saying. They're, they've first banned dodgeball, now running and tag, now running period at recess. Now they're getting rid, they're saying get rid of valedictorian. So everything you talked about 30 years ago, people said that's crazy, even though you had the documents. You didn't have the internet to expose it to everybody at the time. You, you were just trying to warn them. Now that's out. Then you bring up the fact about getting rid of representative government. Now we're being told get rid of it, and Obama's saying he can't wait to be reelected to do whatever he wants and ignore Congress. But then Mitt Romney is run by the very same people, and now they've admitted what you said months ago. Ron Paul did win Maine, did win Iowa, but the Republicans won't just count it. I mean, it's just we're seeing total. Th Why are they accelerating so fast right now? Then I want you to get back into the heart of this charter schools. Well, uh, let me get back to this because it's really very interesting how they, it's a repeat performance, it's constant. And uh, this hype over the schools, the schools we all know are off. I mean, I've written about it. Why? Why does Israel write 750 pages about the deliberate dumbing down of America if she isn't concerned about the quality of education? However, uh, I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather stick with the system that we have right now then accept this new system. You see, what they do is they make it so bad, people will accept anything. Then accept this new system that now, interesting enough, not just the neoconservatives and all these, these uh, conservative groups out there at pushing for charter schools with their unelected school boards, charter schools are required for workforce training. Obviously, if you had an elected school board, even the dumb ones, they are not going to vote to turn the academic system over to workforce training to spin off profits for the corporate fascists. They're not going to do that. So you have to get rid of the elected school boards. And this has been in the works for a long time. I have a long document in my book by Lou Verne Cunningham in 1980s. He was in Kentucky when David Hornbeck from Carnegie was destroying the schools down there, Lou Verne Cunningham spelled out very clearly, we have to get rid of elected school boards. Okay, well, they're getting rid of them now. We have legislation in Maine 
luckily the mayor, the legislature did, uh, they, they turned this down, the school choice one. That school choice legislation supported by our so-called conservative governor would have funded with tax money charter schools, religious schools, private schools, and homeschoolers. Scary as the dickens. Now, remember folks, any school to work legislation that you have, which is all the opera conditioning, teaching the global values, getting the Baldridge Award. If you're a good school, you got the TQM Baldridge Award, no grades, uh, no uh, eighth, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade, no ABCD. I've mentioned that before. This is a Soviet system. This is the system that they're putting in right now, and the conservatives love it. Now, the reason I ask for you, please buy my new abridged, updated version of the book, is that the update, which is the first chapter, has all the information you need in it, about 15 pages of what is going on now and how they're going to use school choice to, to, to implement our, uh, the unelected Soviet system in this country. Okay? Now, don't forget, uh, Norman Dodd was told in 1953 by Raoul Gaither of the Ford Foundation when they were doing the uh, investigation of the tax exempt foundations, he was told that uh, the, the foundation's agenda was determined by the White House. And that agenda was to use their money, the foundation money, uh, to change America so that it could be comfortably merged with the Soviet Union. Let me stop that you again. Let me stop because we need to have an interchange on this. Today they've announced Russian troops training to take on, quote, American terrorist, mainstream media. Suddenly Russia was our enemy. Now they're our buddy. And look at this. I want to talk about this because you're talking about this, this incremental thing. We want to stay in the current bad system because they were meant to wreck the new system, which is really the old system to bring us into the new system. The first few pages of your book from 1983 briefly tell folks the story of how they go from Little Frog Lick Creek High School to Kidney Bean Township, something that just sounds reasonable, to Greater Corn County HS, to Central State Educational Facility, this is Agenda 21, b before they even pass that, Big Brother National Information Distribution Center, he's all ha hateful now, now they have the FEMA Corps, Imperial Interplanetary Propaganda System, Our Lady of Benevolent Dictatorship, One World Global Training Corps, and it ends with Interplanetary Carbon Unit, which we now hear carbon taxes, Tell us about this person that did this cartoon, because in 83, they had the full plan. These terms weren't even introduced yet. I'm very glad you brought this up, Alex, because just today, uh, I think some of your listeners have heard about the Council on Foreign Relations latest book on the need for educational reform. Well, this is, this is just over. It just keeps happening. It, it, you know, it's the dialectic. If you gradualist, if you want to get something, you have to create hysterics, panic, everything else, telling the American people everything's falling apart, and then you move in with a new agenda. Now, let me point out, you just mentioned 1983, very interesting tone. I was in the office in the Department of Education that carried out the agenda, the nation at risk. Remember that? That report, a nation at risk that said that a rising tide of mediocrity, and if a, if a foreign war, a foreign country did this to us, we would consider it an act of war because the schools were so rotten. Huh? Well, okay, what happened at that point? That's why I saw all of this. It's all in my book. Terrell Bell, all the quotes, what they were doing. They had to create the crisis, pretend it. There was a crisis. There wasn't. In 1983, our schools were really still pretty damn good, excuse my language. And, but they told everybody they weren't so that they could switch from the brain-based academic system to the Pavlovian system for the school to work agenda to, to so that we'd be preparing. Our children would be trained, not educated, for the global system going in right now. So that's what happened. They put the Skinner method in across the board. They'd already experimented with all the minorities since 1960. I, I have a good article on my website called Experimentation on Minorities. 
That's why the minority gets not completely, but that is certainly the major reason they had the declining test scores in the inner cities, because they used the Skinner method. They don't care about the test scores, academic. Forget it. They haven't cared about those test scores since 1934, when the Carnegie Corporation called for using the schools to change America from a free market system to a planned economy in the new order. That, that, that is a marvelous little book. It's on my son's website, americandeception.com. It is also included in my book, Deliver Dumbing Down. The proof is there. Carnegie continually, every five years, put money into testing, into the Education Commission of the States, into the National Assessment, into the, US, the Carnegie Soviet uh, Academy of Science Agreement. Uh, to, can you imagine developing software for the computer in critical thinking for elementary school children? Well, just you better be scared, folks, okay? That was when Reagan did the same thing. So in the 80s, sorry to have to say this, this was when the major change took place. They created a phony problem. They implemented the solution, changing the method to Skinner, uh, getting rid of grades, getting rid of K through 12, continuous progress. All of this, the schools right now, I'm going to give you something to look up on the internet, look up the Reinventing Schools Coalition on the internet. And you will see that is the model. That model, David Roger of the Washington Post wrote it up eight years ago in the Washington Post, and he said the kids are graduating at 14 or 21. And the schools that do a good job with this total quality management, non-academic stuff, Skinner, get the Baldrige Award. Now the Baldrige Award is given to corporations such as Cadillac, and you name what, okay? Is your child a car? Now, I often use the Skinner, you know, the, the uh, C.S. Lewis quote, uh, when, when training beats education, which is what's happening, civilization dies. Okay, now, today I see CFR. I've got the reports in the mail. Educational decline is a national security threat. Now, folks, you know what that CFR stands for? Okay, neocons out there. Okay, all you leadership in the conservative movement and the media, what is the CFR to you? I think it's the Council for Foreign Relations, isn't it? All right, well, they're jumping on board with you, you Trotskyite neocons. They're jumping on board. I'm going to read this. The fact that government is, this window here. Uh, here's an excerpt from this report. Educational future, the educational failure, excuse me puts the United States future economic prosperity, global position, and fiscal safety at risk, warns the task force, chaired by Joel Klein, former head of New York City Public Schools, and Condoleezza Rice, former U.S. Secretary of State. Quote, the country will not be able to keep pace, much less lead globally unless it moves to fix the problems it has allowed to fester for too long, argues the task force. It goes on. Now, look. This sounds just like in 1983, in my office, the nation at risk. So they just keep creating the problem, test scores go down, keep getting worse and worse and worse, until finally they're going to get the American people to say, and I've heard Americans say this, good people with brains. Well, Charlie, you know, maybe we ought to try the charter school idea, with, even though it's on elected boards. Well, let me stop you there, because I want to go back to this. It was, it was like a decade ago you told me the story of this, because now having my knowledge of this and watching it played out, uh, it says uh, copyright P-E-T-T, Kappen. And if I remember correctly, you were saying this was a joke in the Department of Education, because only the... Uh, 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 but correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm going from like 10 years of memory. Only an insider could have done this because it's 1950 Little Frog Creek High School. Then they just train you. Let's just change the name. It's reasonable. Let us change things. Kidney Bean Township, still a happy kid. Now it's Greater Corn County HS. He's still happy, but not as much. Now he's mean. Central State Education Facility, more books. You know, designing to not do the basics, to screw the kids up, and to break them into subgroups either high achievers or everybody else failing. Then we moved from 2000 into 2012, Big Brother National Information Distribution Center. This is in 83, folks. 
2015, going to the future, Imperial Interplanetary Propaganda System. Then it's Total Shaved Head, Our Lady of the Benevolent Dictatorship, One World Global Training Corps. And then pretty soon it's the happy little minion with headphones, which means CIA brainwashing. They did that interplanetary carbon unit, the carbon tax. This is actually when they get everybody ready for the mass reduction with the bioweapons from the Rockefeller Foundation documents. So the point is, this is a process for mass culling. This is a total master plan. Now, because I remember you told the story of this, and I'm going from like 10, 12-year memory. You haven't told it on my show since then. What was the story of this particular uh, intro to your book from 1983, uh, because if memory serves, again, you were saying they were making jokes in the Department of Education about this. Well, no, not really. What happened is that after I was retired huh, from my job for leaking the documents, uh, I went home and, and I was, uh, I used to get, uh, what's it called, educational leadership. It's, it's the publication of the Association Educational Research and Improvement, and they had this cartoon in there. I think it's 1985, and I looked at it, and that particular journal was very liberal. I mean, they're into all this critical thinking, garbage, Skinner, everything, you know, and occasionally there might be an article that you could, right, was, you know, relate to a bit, but I looked at this cartoon, and I thought, whoa, whoa, what, you know, because at that time, None of us were really thinking that forward, huh? And I thought, what's that doing in this journal? So I kept it. I clipped it. I kept it carefully. Always. Always remembered it. Then came along 1999, when we were publishing The Big Baby here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so in 1999, I thought, I'm going to put that in this book, because that's an extraordinary cartoon. And I called... I called educational leadership and I asked them, or Phi Delta Kappen, I think it was, Phi Delta Kappen. And I, I said, can I, how can I contact Joel Pat, the, the uh, cartoonist? And they said he doesn't work for us anymore, uh, but he's working for uh, a, a very important newspaper in Kentucky. And I called him and I, I said, I really love this cartoon. And he said, I, you still have that? He said, it's one of my favorites. I lost it. I said, well, I hold on to it, and I wish that I could use it. He said, send it to me. I'll fix it up, you know, get the line stronger, and this, that. And I did, and he did, and he, he virtually gave it to me. I've never understood the reason why they allowed that in there. It's absolutely marvelous. As you know, Alex would put it in the front of the book and in the back of the book. But anyway, what I want to say here is that I, we were talking about a nation at risk. 1983, when that, you know, that big bandwagon across the country and telling us all the, the schools were failing, we had to make so many changes, which was all Skinner that they were putting in. But anyway, this is a very interesting article here. In 1990, and I'd heard about this before, but I never got this Sandia report. I knew that it was important because the report said that the nation at risk uh, statistics were, were incorrect. So let me read this. It says in 1990, I got this off the internet, Wikipedia, I think, uh, regarding nature risk. Admiral James Watkins, the Secretary of Energy, commissioned the Sandia Labs in New Mexico to document the decline in the nation at risk report with actual data. When the system scientists broke down the SAT test scores into subgroups, they discovered contradictory data. While the overall average scores declined, the subgroups of students increased. In statistics, this is known as Simpson's paradox. Now, the three authors presented their report. Uh, David Carnes uh, allegedly told the authors of the Sandia report, quote, David Carnes, by the way, was Xerox, the head of Xerox, and later went to work for George Bush in the Department of Ed. Uh, David Akar said, allegedly told the authors of the report, quote, and get this, folks, you bury this or I'll bury you. Okay, so that Nation at Risk report was a farce. It was just to get us moving more and more towards this non-academic system that I've outlined for you. And if you just go on the internet, type in 
Reinventing Schools Coalition. And you will find out what your children and grandchildren are going to have in the future. That is the model. They're putting it into Maine. They, can you imagine, Alex, it just so happens that they put it into this tiny little school where I live. And I was able to go over and listen to the facilitator presenting this. No grades. You can graduate, as David Broder said in the Washington Post, at 14 or 21. No ABCD, continuous progress. This is the system that the Baldrige, you know, the Malcolm Baldrige Total Quality Management Award given to the best functioning corporations gets. Folks, you really consider your child as a car? Is that what you really want to have done to your child? You want your child to be trained as workers are who put cars together? Or you want, as C.S. Lewis says, you should have in order to preserve civilization, education. You don't want this training. And if any of you people who think that school choice is a good idea continue to think this after this interview, I plead with you to get my book, the updated version, and maybe the older book that's more expensive because all the documents showing the, the involvement of these people, I really could be very rude in describing them. These are conservatives who are, believe it or not, maybe I'm just naive or something, they are responsible basically for putting in this corporate, fascist, socialist, communist system. And once it's in, in education, with elected councils, non-elected non councils, no representation for you, although you pay taxes, once it's in, what's to keep all the other elected boards from becoming non-elected? We are moving, and I know the gals and guys out in California are fighting, you know, you know Agenda 21, congratulations to the Rose, the whole crowd, Michael Shaw, you name them. Uh, they know what's happening. Uh, maybe because they're closer to China, they can see it better than most of our, our people. But, we're, you know, really, to me, I'm even shocked that I believe that we are implementing right now what Norman Dodd was told by Rowan Gaither. We're putting in the Soviet system here. And Americans don't see it, but you know, I have a funny little statement, Alex, that I, I've been telling people lately. Maybe you want, maybe your people won't think it's so funny. But you know, when you go to people and you explain to them, you have all the documentation, you say, look, read this, you know, one and one is two, right? Well, no, it's not anymore, is it? Hmm? And uh, you show them everything, and they look at you like, I mean, where are you from? What planet did you come from, Charlotte? You know, well, you know what I compared this with? The guy's been very ill, doesn't know what's wrong with him. And finally, his doctor does an MRI. And he calls him in, and they put it up on the screen. And his back is riddled with cancer. And the guy just looks at the doctor, and he's like these people with the blank stares, and says, oh, Oh, gee whiz, that's interesting. Well, thanks, Doc. Goodbye. Well, Charlotte, uh, looking at this, it just shows us how crazy things have gotten. Let me ask you this question. Why are things accelerating so fast now? And then I should add, people can't go to Infowars.com and get the books that are discounted there on the site and it supports the radio show and what you're doing, what everybody's doing. It gets a free citizen rule book when they do order at Infowars.com and then give it to educators. If they can't do that, it's fine because you, on your website and also on your son's website, you have posted the original big thick book online for free along <laughs> with documents that the globalists have fought to suppress. So why don't you tell people, A, why are they moving so fast right now, if you agree with that statement? Just, I mean, the whole agenda's out in the open. And then B, tell folks about the free online copy of Deliberate Dumbing Down. Okay, Alex, I, I'm not trying to compliment you, but I think that it's because they're moving fast because a very small minority of us are moving fast too, led by you. 
uh, not very many of us, believe it or not, I think that they really are not, they really are slightly disturbed with us. And I, as I said in the last interview I had with you, uh, we wouldn't be speaking today. You and I, you wouldn't be able to have any interviews. I wouldn't be able to write, or I probably, they probably would have killed me by this time, had it not been for all the other marvelous Americans who have passed on. And, and all of them are listed in my book under acknowledgments. There are about 60 of them. None of them were connected really with organizations, interestingly enough, right? These were individualist Americans. Very talented judges, lawyers, doctors, uh, wonderful moms, mostly women, actually. So that is why we are, they wanted to bring us down in 1976 with the Declaration of Interdependence. And they didn't get it. And, and here we are, 2012. And I think there's a tremendous movement right now in the United States, really big time. I don't know whether our numbers are doubled or what, but uh, people are really getting with it. And we're getting the research out. And uh, I think that's why they're moving very fast. Uh, I don't know, personally, uh, if anybody asks me what our likelihood of being able to stop this unbelievable, well-oiled, funded, greased machine, I wouldn't say we're very... very and by many. the way, Charlotte, I agree with you. It's a catch-22 for them. We stalled them all those years, you and Ron Paul and Gibber Griffin back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. I came along in the mid-90s with countless others. And so we stalled them. They got behind the technology developed that they wanted to use to control us. Instead, we hijacked it, the World Wide Web that was going to be worldwide wiretap for them. And so now they're trying to have catch up, but they're in an old paradigm. They're fighting the last propaganda war. And yeah. now they don't understand. They're naked in front of us. The emperor has no clothes. I'm worried about false flag. Now, I want to get your take on that. And, and also, again, give out your websites that we have under you on the lower third so they can go there because that's where the real treasure trove is. And again, get the book at infowars.com. And cause people tend to respect an actual hard copy when you give it to the principal, give it to the teacher. They're compartmentalized. They're, they've been brought up in it. They read this, they're gonna recognize everything, but never you know see it from this angle or perspective. Very well written, very powerful, deliberate dumbing down the new revised uh, updated edition at infowars.com. I want you to give out your websites here in a moment, but first I want to pause and play a clip of the now Attorney General in the 90s, Deputy Attorney General, Eric Holder, the guy shipping hand grenades, guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment, talking about on C-SPAN how he talked to the media officials up in a big meeting about, quote, brainwashing the public to be anti-gun. Okay, so we're going to play this clip because this illustrates how, in their own words, they see us as a helpless population, they're brainwashing. But once you're aware of the brainwashings going on, no matter how sophisticated it is, you can defeat it. So here's that clip and I wanna get your take. Part of every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We also want to uh, have a hotline that we will set up and have the number of that hotline that you would just go out there and that would be something that people would have emblazoned in their minds so that All when right. they see it. And again, we played the full clip many times. He says, I met with the media heads. Uh, we're we're going to put out anti-gun messages. It's got to be more intense. And then when we see guns in a house, like in your gun case, you wonder why the plumber comes and cops come later and go, you got guns. You're like, well, yeah, it's legal. I doesn't matter, sir. We got a report. This is right out of the Soviet Union. So there is the attorney general talking about brainwashing the public against guns. Charlotte? Yeah, well, the more you, you see a lot of this recently, uh, Arne Duncan, you know, the, the Commissioner of Education, he came right out. He's come out several several times on subjects like this, and he's the one that called for, you know, paying students for good grades. So he totally favors the awkward conditioning. And, uh, but, but I, you know, there's an interesting, it's huge, it's called Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Nobody wants to read it, I don't think. That's by Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator, a Marxist. 
And they're putting that into the schools. You see, that is where this sort of thing you're talking about, Alex, is coming from. And people might not uh, understand that, that, that Paolo Ferris' philosophy, which is total Marxism, you'll find it mostly in the international baccalaureate programs, but that doesn't mean it's not in all the other global ed programs, too. If your school has global education programs, you have got to go and check them out and demand to see them. But the problem now is, believe it or not, in Maine, we've got computers K through 12. And they're getting rid of all the books in the schools across the country. And I do think that that quote from Dustin Houston that I often use, it's in my books, uh, well, the World Institute for Computer Assisted Teaching, is just so scary. Uh, it's hard to believe anybody would say this, but he did it in 1984. He said, won't it be wonderful when the child in the most remote county or country in the world or whatever can have the benefit of the world's top five psychologists on the computer software and nobody, you parent, huh? Nobody can get between that child and the curriculum. Now, that's what's coming. I, I plead with you all. What are you going to do first? You have to oppose school choice, all school choice, all except the original one, which is the parent at home or the religious school or the private school that has never accepted a single pay penny of tax money or public school services or computers or anything, even special ed. You know what? If you had a child in public school in kindergarten who was a special ed child, you took him out and you homeschool him, he's still tied in. That's how tied in they get you. Do not accept any of the school choice proposals. And I'll tell you, this, if you can come up with a school choice proposal that is safe and satisfactory, and you don't agree with me. No strings attached. No strings attached. I will send you $1,000. All right, let me stop you right there, because I've got to bring this up. My children, the two oldest, one is not in, you know, in, in, in school yet, she's four, but the nine-year-old and then the middle daughter, uh, who's seven, they both are homeschooled. And a few years ago, we said, but it's fun to be part of these homeschool groups, these academies that have campuses and everything where they go twice a week. So they were there last year, and it's Christian, and it's good, and it's accelerated, and they get to have some social stuff, and there's some sports and things. So it's, it's best of both worlds. This year, the standardized testing is they want to be accredited to get into the school where there'll be no jobs, 53% can't even get a job with their diploma. It's all a hoax. Then my kids bring home Michelle Obama is going to save them because it's part of being accredited. It's all Department of Education. She's going to tell them what to eat. And they have this food day, Department of Education, even a pretty much anti-establishment because most of them are my listeners there. And, and good Christian people still to be accredited because people want to be able to get their kids into college. It's new world order now. I mean, it's everywhere. And so now we're like, okay. I mean, I mean, it, it is incredible. I'm glad you see this, Alex, because what I said before, I want to make it clear. Now, if please, folks, don't don't email me and say that you know of a. Uh, a uh, private Christian school that uh, that isn't controlled by the government. Well, sure, there are plenty that aren't, but they haven't taken any tax money. It's I want you to send me information about a school that has taken tax money from the government and is not in some way could totally control. You know, even Chester Finn, who was high up with the neocons, and people have heard of him. He was uh, secretary, assistant secretary under uh, Bush. Department of Ed. Way back then, he said, you know, short of throwing money in the streets so everybody can come in and grab a dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars, whatever, you know, run home. Short of doing that, there is no way for the tax money to be distributed to people or organizations or, or, or what without accountability. And that means, and he said this in the early 80s, the quotes in my book, look, look under Finn, F-I-N-N, -N, 
That means that if you take a penny, pay a penny for the federal government, the state government, your local government, any supplies or services of the school, you are completely controlled. Your child will have to take the national test, which is 60%. But, 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 hold on, we're going to get into the national test. We're almost out of time, but I want to be clear. From what I've researched, the school isn't taking money, but they want to say they're accredited. And that's the issue, is that just to be accredited, the discrimination against schools that are under government control, then it's not accredited. So, so from what I've researched, they're not taking money, but they want to be accredited. So I think it's even worse than you're saying, but you're the expert. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's true, because accreditation is going to require that you, you have, you know, absolutely no biases, no, everything has to be politically correct. That's why you won't be accredited unless you go through that routine, see? And uh, all I can say is I never dreamed that Charlotte, who had been fighting, which is, I've always known it was the Soviet Union, I've always known it was communism, but I focused on that so much. And, but I never dreamed that I would end up doing a radio show where I'm saying that school choice is the Trojan chores to bring the communist system in. But it is. It is. It allows the total takeover of our, everything. It allows the total takeover of our representative constitutional form of government by allowing unelected councils Look the word on the dictionary. You'll find it's defined in the old dictionaries as Soviets. Please, folks, I know it's not a really jazzy, exciting subject, school choice, but it sure is dangerous. It's the Trojan horse to lose our free representative form of government. And I will bet my bottom dollar on that. And, you know, it's all going in now. The Chinese system, truly lifelong under the umbrella of the school district. And Charlotte, let me expand on that. This is a powerful information. The school is the heart of every community. And quote after quote by the globalist is how they're going to use it as the metastasization center to spread the cancer. This is Agenda 21. Both books, Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21, Discount at Rosa Corey, available at Infowars.com with the deliberate dumbing down of America, revised and abridged edition, Charlotte Thompson uh, Iserby, all available at Infowars.com. Please get it out to everyone you know, because most of the minions of this system are not aware of what they're part of. Charlotte, uh, in the last three or four minutes we've got, any other points you think are important that should be made here? Well, I really don't know. I think that we've the most, the, I'm trying to think of what's important aside from uh, the school choice issue, that, that is key. Uh, the other legislation that is being pushed all over the country is the school to work. And, and uh, it's the uh, non-graded education system, no competition, no nothing. I mean, it's so tragic. And your children aren't going to have any upward mobility. They won't be able to decide what they want to do in their life. You know what I said to my son today, Alex? I said, you know what? I'd rather live with a lot of bums hanging around on the street in town asking for money with a free market system than with the mandated Soviet womb to tomb. You will work at whatever job we decide for you. Cash system. Yes. I would rather have the bums on the street any day. And I'm sick and tired of these neocons and whatever you want to call them, even free market people. You know, I'm, I'm getting very disgusted with their whole philosophy. Well, George Bernard Shaw, the socialist, said, you will work at whatever job we give you in the socialist system. And if you don't, we'll kill you. That, you know what? That's exactly what they will do. Well, I mean, Bill Gates is saying, kill grandma, hire 10 teachers, and the teachers clap. They think a state that's going to kill grandma is going to give them something. No, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill everybody. It's, you know, Glenn Beck, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, he did a pretty good little clip on his trip to Rome. Did you see it? No, I didn't. <laughs> Where he talked about, he had uh, interviews with people at the Vatican and how the new pope has selected 13 new cardinals. Uh, all very, very conservative. 
And they're so upset in the Vatican. They really are. And, and Glenn Beck, who's, I think he's Mormon, isn't he? Uh, he was really very good. He was very moderate, in, and people should look that up. He was saying, folks, look, we're all Catholic, really, in the, in the term of big, you know, Christians, huh? Not the, yeah, the, Catholic the, just means Christian. People don't know that. Then there's right. Roman Catholic means specifically, yeah. That's right. And he said, we, whether you're Methodist, Jewish, whatever, we have to stick together because this is a battle against Lucifer, we are in the last stages. And he said, the Vatican is totally convinced of this now. It took a while, you know, I have a lot of problems with the Vatican because they, they were so surrounded by people who didn't want anybody to figure out what they were doing. But now we do have Benedict who evidently, as Glenn Beck said, he selected 13 very, very true conservative cardinals because He's, ex you know, I mean, the, there is no word to describe how concerned he is. Well, you can say what you want about the Vatican, but there's no doubt the liberal Hollywood New World Order establishment is assaulting it 110%. I'm not even Catholic, Roman Catholic. But the point is, is that you can see the system is trying to overrun it. And I think the Catholic Church has figured out, the Roman Catholic Church, it tried to work with the system. The system is now trying to fully destroy it because the Luciferians want to destroy all religion to make so, themselves God. That's, well, you see, that's pretty much what Beck said. You know, he said, oh, if, once the Catholic Church goes down, we all go. <laughs> well, that's like Obama saying the Catholic Church has got to hire, uh, you know, transvestites to teach five-year-olds. Oh, yeah, I know. And th that he talked about Obama, too. I mean, it really was good. And I hope people will look at that because the bottom line here, and I really doubt that I would have spent the past 30 years doing what I'm doing, ending up with this lousy cold. Uh, you know, I'm really sort of addicted to the subject, I guess, but I know something's very wrong. And so I, uh, I myself, you know, I wrote my article, The Devil's Seven Prong Fork. It's on the internet all over the place, folks. Do read it. Because it'll make you feel a little better, it, it, because it does explain that it, your falling for this wasn't entirely your fault. It's diabolical how they did it with gradualism, the dialectic, mass media control. We're up against total sophistication, but you better know when the mainstream corporate prostitute media pushes something, it's yeah. evil. And whoever they attack may not even be perfect, but they're attacking them because they don't fit into that master plan. That's right, and it's very, very evil right now. And you know, in a way, those who don't have any faith, in, in, you know, in, in Jesus Christ, uh, this is an important time for them because if there's ever, if they're ever going to have evidence that there are two sides to this battle, it's right now. Either you're you're a Christian. Or Jewish, right? If you, you know, that's, I, I'm not pushing, I, I'm just saying either you are Christian or Jewish, or you're with Satan. I mean, you may not know it. I mean, there are a lot of quotes in the Bible that say that, you know, I think Jesus Christ said it if you're not with me, you're against me. Huh? But there are people who, if they can't see it now, if they can't, look what's going on in the schools now in first grade. Look what they're teaching our little children. I mean, it is so sick. I thought this kind of education was sick when they were teaching eighth graders in the 70s these things. Now they're teaching our little ones, our six and seven year olds. Really, how long folks are, I know your audience agrees with this, but how long are we going to allow this to go on? Oh, they're teaching five-year-olds things I didn't know till I was in college. It is purely satanic to try to ruin innocent children. But again, you know, we've been talking about the, it is satanic. So it is so satanic that the average American will say, well, anything to get away from this. But we need school choice, see? But yeah. instead, the dam breaks and all that evil floods into everything else. Yeah. So uh, don't let the horrible evil that's so evident uh, let you fall for school choice. Homeschool your children, but don't forget that one of the design teams under George Bush for the New American School Development Corporation was connecting the school district with the homeschoolers. 
charter schools, let me point this out to you, they have home schools too. And it was through uh, William Bennett who admitted to charter school, uh, to pub, you know, homeschool parents when they said, what test? Mr. Bennett, Secretary Bennett, will our children use with your virtual computer academy? And he said, oh, you have to use the national test. And that's 60% attitudinal, right? You know, so you've got to understand that their whole goal is to control Oh, I heard the news. Yeah, take over homeschools. We're, we're out of time, but I heard the local news. A federal grant of six hundred thousand dollars, our money, to teach the kids about Agenda Twenty One and zero waste, and how humans are trash. Right here where I live, we just people put their kids on a government bus, send them right in to be taught how to do things I didn't know about until I was twenty years old, and I wish I didn't know about them then. It is purely satanic. Charlotte Isserby, your book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, available at InfoWars.com. Great job. Your website has been below you the entire time. Give us your website one more time and your son's excellent website. Okay. Mine is DeliberateDumbingDown.com, and my son's marvelous one is uh, AmericanDeception.com. And I apologize for my voice, but I'm about to lose it. And, oh, uh, I, think, I think the fact that you've been... You've been under the weather today. You've even been more powerful. Sometimes it is when we don't feel well that we, 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 we rise to the occasion. Charlotte, great job. I'm going to end the show right now and say bye to you here at the end. Stay right there. Thank you so much. Amazing. We'll have you back very soon. Well, there is Charlotte Thompson Isserby. And let me tell you, this is a fight against good and evil. If you don't believe in the devil, that's your issue. Might as well be the devil. Everything I've ever read about in history about devils, goblins, demons, that's the people doing this. Who wants to mess up little kids? Who wants to break up families? Who wants to shut down family farms? Who wants to inject cancer viruses in people? Who wants to shut down local communities and pay $22 billion to ship General Motors to China, Brazil, and Eastern Europe? <laughs> Some evil, sick people. And why do they hate America? For all our faults, we've been the best there is, the most wholesome, the most good, the most free, and we're hated for that. We're fighting pure evil. If you support what we're doing, please get this video out to everybody. If you support Liberty, get it out to everybody. Become a subscriber, 15-day free trial at prisonplanet.tv. Don't just see these shows that we post on YouTube and everywhere else. See it when it first airs, 7 o'clock every night. See the radio show with the video every day. All my films, online books, so much more, prisonplanet.tv. We're in a war. And when people realize we're in a war, that's the beginning of the victory. And that's starting to happen. That's why the enemy is accelerating their program right now. This has been almost an hour-long interview with her. 30 plus minutes with uh, Jim Mars and all the news. Great job to the crew and great job to you, the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. Lord willing, I'll see you back on the radio tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern, 11 uh, a.m. Central, and 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll have footage from the Ron Paul rally that's going to kick off soon right here in Austin, Texas. I'm Alex Jones, signing off from the front lines of the Info War.